Welcome once again. It's a daily favor to me. So Sahar TV. Good morning. Mixed reactions. Mixed reactions have greeted the Supreme Court's judgment affirming Bola Tinubu as the president winner of the presidential election that was conducted on February 23rd. Some have expressed this appointment, surprise, shock, while others have said claimed victory. What's your reaction, sir? I don't do reactions. I have absolutely no reactions. Are you disappointed? Of course I'm not. I expected no less from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did exactly as I expected that it would, and that I was announced that it would. I don't know exactly what anyone is supposed to be reacting to. Some Nigerians were optimistic that the Supreme Court will do the right thing. You yourself had had a measure of optimism in your, one of your recent interviews, uh, hoping that the Supreme Court will do the right thing. I said, you can never rule out magic, if you notice. I said, you can never rule out magic. I didn't even use the word miracle. Because if I had said miracle, we would have been based on faith. Mm. And um, of course, faith is substantiated, right? Mm. But in this case, I said magic, abracadabra. Because um, I had no such illusions. So you had no such illusions. Now, if I may ask, how does this judgment impact? back the political landscape of the country at this time. He simply just told us that the law does not matter in Nigeria. It is the formal enthronement of feudal impunity in Nigeria. That is what it is. It simply means that uh, nothing matters. Your provenance does not matter. Your character does not matter. Nothing matters. All you have to do is find a Yakubu sat at INEC, and uh, magic can happen at INEC. And once that magic happens, the Yakubu will tell you after announcing the result of the presidential election based on some abracadabra, oh. he can tell you, in the middle of the night, by the way, he can simply tell you with my glowing <laughs> impunity, go to court. Because he knows that the court you're going to would find some reasons oh by which to validate the criminal actions that he has engaged in. You know, there is this funny proverb of the Yorubas. He says, Ilutiko Sofi, Eshel Sinibe. You know, when you translate, it would tend to suggest that the Yoruba mindset has the capacity to envision or imagine a place ungoverned by laws. Nothing can be further from the truth. The Yorubas have very rigid systems of customs, taboos, laws, traditions, norms, cultures, multiple sets of guidelines by which we live. So the Yoruba mindset, the worldview, couldn't have been talking about a place where the law does not exist. So Ilutiko Sofi is not a place where the law does not exist. It's a place where the law does not rule. That is what the Yoruba law proverb oh. was saying and is saying. And this is what we have now achieved as a people. There are no sins, no infractions in a place ungoverned by law. It is the impunity of men that governs such places, and that is what 
we have today. There is nothing I'm going to say today that I haven't said for years. But I was graciously reminded this morning of an interview I granted you years back, where I had said that as we will go through the electoral process, we will use the opportunity to awaken the Nigerian people, to let them see the commonalities of their afflictions. And that eventually, the Nigerian system must resist the demand for change. And that having resisted that demand for change, it will expose itself to the people. I remember, I believe I was sat in this same chair, and you were in that same chair on the day. And I went on to tell you that by the time we would have gone through the judicial process, we would have denuded the Nigerian judiciary. That the Nigerian people will be able to see clearly that what is meant to be the last hope of the common man is completely hopeless in giving any hope to the common man. Whatever I might have had to say, I believe Justice Dakijo said everything eloquently. And God bless him. So there is really nothing left to say about that Supreme Court. Without going into the key arguments and the technicalities, uh, questions are being raised as to the preparation of the opposition parties themselves. I mean, I'm talking about the lawyers of the opposition party, that is the PDP lawyers and uh, the Labour Party lawyers, uh, in terms of their preparedness. In fact, uh, uh, Chief Robert Clark, uh, SAN, uh, said with regard to the judgment that the PDP has no point at all. They did not do their homework before coming to the court. And in referring to the LP, he said the Labour Party never won the election on any ground. Uh, if I may ask, sir, how will you say that the opposition party lawyers were not actually prepared? You know, the beauty of the Nigerian space is that they bring out these old men who would ordinarily have gone to their graves with honor. And then they bring them out to help to perpetuate the narrative that they would prefer to put in the public space. So you would look at somebody like Chief Clark, erudite man, old Whig, distinguished lawyer. And you would expect that he would speak to the truth. But of course, he would prefer that we focus on the technicalities. That is the narrative that the system, of which he has been an eminent member for decades, mm. and we see what they have built. We see the judiciary that they have built with their lives and their exertions. So they will prefer that we have an argument about how much prepared we would have been and how much better the system would have fared if these lawyers were to be the equals of the almighty chief Olani Kweko, the one uh, the 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 oh, in, in, com, incomparable Latif Fagbemi mm -hmm. SAN, whom even the Honorable Justice Odili was waxing lyrical about, who eventually, of course, is now a Honorable Attorney General. Yeah. Of course, you would have had to bring this team of lawyers from where? Togo? Uh, oh, okay, I forgot. We probably might have found such lawyers if we had gone to Ghana. And of course, we would have imported the justices from Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Look, Justice um, Chief Clark can spin this all he cares. And um, he can speak all the 
Dogon Turenchi cares to speak from now till kingdom comes. We know how justice smells or stinks. So, please. In your opinion, sir, how, how do you think the Supreme Court's judgment will shape the perception of the judiciary's independence and integrity? See, Gomez, you're forcing me into a dissection of the past. And that past is gone. The illusion, the illusion of the judiciary as the last hope of the, the common, common man, man in Nigeria has been irredeemably lost. Oh. I said before the Supreme Court judgment that the existing constitutional order would have been destroyed by the time the Supreme Court finds the grace to legitimize the presidency of the man known as Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It has found the grace to do exactly that. Now, because of that singular decision or action, what has happened is that it has set multiple precedents that the system, our court system is found on the doctrine of stare decisis, the hierarchy of courts. What the Supreme Court has established are clear. The lawyers who are still in practice can distill the case law. It is an illusion to believe that the judiciary does not make law. It does make law in reality, because where there are ambiguities as to what the lawmakers might have intended, mm. then the judiciary is required to interpret, interpret, which eventually is a way of them making law. But this is not one of those situations. This is a situation where the Supreme Court threw away multiple precedents, decisions of the same court, and where it has now set multiple precedent that it would have to f begin to overturn. I don't understand exactly how it plans to deal with the mess that it has created. And yeah. frankly speaking, it's none of my business. As far as I'm concerned, it has done exactly what I had hoped that it would do. And I'm very happy that it has done so. So I resolve this mess in his own business. Now, what implications does this judgment have for the opposition party and the political dynamics in the country leading up to the next presidential election, sir? The fact of the matter is that we don't have a democracy any longer. The net effect, look, we would, I don't know how many years we're going to, or months for that matter, Tinubu is going to allow us to continue to pretend that we're a democracy. I don't know how long. But I doubt that we have, pre, I, don't, I doubt that we have much longer to continue the pretense of a democracy, because in reality, um, what we have is a court system that we do exactly as it is told. It is a court system that is found on prebendal instincts. Even the appointive processes, you, you, you can already see that it is becoming more or less an hereditary thing. So if your father is a Supreme Court justice, you can come into the line of succession. It's already clear that the judiciary is becoming more or less just another. In fact, it is just the same as our police, just the same as our custom service. If anybody had any illusions about who we have become, what our judiciary is, but Joe, who just retired, ah. I don't need to say a word any longer. Better qualified, more eminently qualified lawyers than myself, who are still in law practice, who would have to have to wrap their brains around the, the decisions of the Supreme Court. It's not, it didn't start today. You understand? Yeah. It did not start today. There is nothing, I don't want to talk about the past. They've established who they are. I don't, the, 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 it, it used to be quite painful for me that a lot of Nigerians were still living 
with the illusion of a functional judiciary. But I remember that long before there was a Peter Obi, long before, long, long before there was a Peter Obi, I'd been out here in the public space saying very clearly that our judiciary is not different from our custom. Mm. They are not from Togo. They are Nigerians like me and you. Your, our mechanics cheat us. We, we cheat our clients. Our clients cheat us. All of us are the same. Why we've had this illusion of an angelic judiciary, I do not understand. That is the same judiciary that Buhari was busy handing Supreme Court justices, handed one until that one was forced to resign so that they dropped charges against him. One, I believe even the one that just sat on the, the that presided over this case, it was one of those Buhari was dragging around. You, you, you have a situation where our judiciary mirrors us. It is who we are. The judiciary, non, how do we demand that our judiciary be different from us? Uh, you, you, you're really painting a very blooming picture. I'm not like painting you any is, picture. I'm just it, showing you a mirror. So All I'm doing, look, look. At listen, this point in time, listen, what you're saying, sir, like, just for clarification, yes. for, for clarification, yes. for, 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 and going forward. Yes. Uh, Looking at this precedence itself yes. and, and the Supreme Court judge's role, uh, how will this affect future elections disputes? You can't have future elections. You're just lying to it. Look, I, am t I told you long before now yeah. that once the Supreme Court finds the grace to validate the selection oh of the man currently known as Bola Ahmed Tinobu, the existing legal order collapses. Whether this is acceptable to people's hearing or not, I have merely, look, I predict nothing. I don't predict. All I do is say the truth of what I see. So, which is quite clear. Uh, while I mean talking now, you, you you mentioned the fact that you don't see any elections in the future. Oh now, no. oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Is, Let's be clear. Is it because uh, what uh, what kind there of are no mean? penalties, especially for Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> if I see you planting cocoa, mm. no, no, no. Let me revise that. If I was there and I saw you with your okra seedlings and you were planting okra, okra, it is clear to me that what you plant is what you will reap. Yeah. Every seed reproduces after its so, kind. kind yeah. Simplicity. Now, we were all here, high neck published its guidelines. Those guidelines were published pursuant to the Electoral Act. INEC promised Nigerians, it went up and down the length and breadth of Nigeria, made representations that we were going to have an election using Diva. An IREF. An IREF. And now, the Supreme Court just said what INEC promised and whatever it cares to do does not matter. matter. Ah. So what am I supposed So now, <laughs> this man who was in power in Lagos State, effectively owned Lagos State for 24 years, under whose hegemony in Lagos State, Nothing passes without approval. Has now been given control over a country where institutions have been completely compromised. Poverty has been completely weaponized. Ignorance has acquired atomic grade weaponization. 
You are now talking about an election in 2027. How? How citizens elect people into office? Citizens. Citizenship is suggestive of the rule of law. The Supreme Court just told us the law does not matter. Didn't tell me it had told me long ago. Me, I had no illusions and I had made that position clear. But for those who still had illusions, we've just been told resoundingly that it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. So how can I now, in the face of all of that, be talking about an election in 2027? I'd be a madman to have any such presumption. <laughs>